Hi there, in this week's video, I continue my journey through my last ever wardrobe build and install. That's coming up next. And welcome back. As I explained in part one of this extended series, I called time on fitted furniture or built-ins last year, but I had this one job still on the books, and at the end of episode one, after templating the space and getting my cut list together, I learned that my timber yard were working flat out on something else and couldn't process it for me. So I was looking at losing most of a weekend to collecting, then cutting up boards. Or so I thought. I popped into the timber yard this morning and talked to the man, rather than talking to the man who talks to the man. And they can't do me a full cut list, but what they can do is they've agreed just to do the rips for me, just to do the long rips. So and most of it is just long rips in 530 and then lots of cross cuts to the right sort of width. So they're going to do the rips for me, which makes them much easier to handle, which means that the only big boards I'm going to have to handle are the 6mm. I'm starting with the narrow rips for this skinny cabinet using my DIY parallel guides to keep everything consistent before making the first cut, or trying to anyway. How many Festool engineers does it take to fix a dust port on a TS55? We'll never know because it's not fixed yet. Well, nothing a length of gaffer tape can't cure, and with that quick fix applied, I can crack on with the cut list, working my way through the 18mm carcasses. And then moving on to the 6mm, cutting the full sheet to length first, and then to width, just to make it easier to handle in a small space. For the cross cuts I'm marking the length using one of the 6mm backs as a reference, then setting the rail, and then stapling a stop to the bench for the repeat cuts. Yes, it's basic, but it works, and I can work quickly through the cut list for the carcass sides, bases, and fixed shelves. When it comes to the adjustable shelves, I'm using the old trick of putting a 2mm packer against the flagstop just to step it out enough to provide clearance in the carcass without making it a sloppy fit. Alrighty, so it's been a while since I did all my own cutting, but it went okay. Got all the straight bits done. Uh, what I need to do now is work on the uh, angled end unit where it's going up into the mansard where you get that awkward angle. I've transferred, this is the back, 6 mil back for that angle cabinet and I've got my little uh, template pattern laid out so I know the angles are right, I've got it all drawn out and it all fits just nice. And what I need to do next yeah, hang on. So what I need to do next now is get these, these angled sections, because obviously they're going to be mitered, but not 45 degrees. But I want to get the, the, these two long angle done, ones done first. I've done a quick test on it, it seems to work pretty well. I'm going to use Climax connectors uh, to join those two together, not because I particularly want it to be knocked down, but because that's, you know, that's the sort of angle. <laughs> that's the sort of angle, it's a really shallow kind of, angle and to get a screw into either of those ends would be almost impossible. 
even though it's not going to be seen, screws would be ideal, but I'll just use the Climax connectors because they're really effective and they do work very well. Uh, as I say, I've run a quick test on it and they seem to be fine. So we'll get this, uh, the long angled piece, I've got an 800 and a 1400 roughly, get those cut where I know they're going to be and then I can get the angle, provided those angles are right, I can get uh, the shelves done as well on that little top piece. Uh, and you might remember as well uh, when I did, if you've seen the MFT replacement top uh, video, one of the reasons why I made a wide sacrificial strip in this is so that I could do bevel cuts on the MFT and that's what I'm going to do uh, these on because it's just easier. Uh, it means you're not having to clamp the rail or anything like that. So fingers crossed we're all good. Uh, I've got the first one ready to go and I've got the longer one down there. The angle's all set, so let's crack on and get those cut and offer them up and make sure it's uh, nice and tight before we carry on. With the back and side aligned against a couple of bench dogs, I can ease the short side up to its mark and clamp it upright. Then offer up the long side and, once happy, mark on each side where they need to be trimmed back to fit. I'm happy enough with the fit to move on to the Clamex fittings and these are quickly cut and fitted in the usual way without any fuss or drama. So that's pretty good. Got a very slight, nice and smooth at the front edge here. Ever such a slight half a mil lip on the back there. I need to sort of tweak that a bit. They're not quite in line, so that might have something to do with it. Um, but yeah, no problems with that. That worked out very well. So I will get the straight cuts done next and then do those angled cuts for the shelves. And then we can get, uh, then that's the bulk of that done. Then I can do the shelf pinholes get the dominoes in and uh, I'll be prepping and painting. Haha, <laughs> yeah, all in time. But a cup of tea first, I think, because it's time. Post T, I decided to recut the angle. I had enough length on the workpiece and it would have bugged me if I hadn't. And then I could get on to cutting the angles for the fixed upper shelves, and then the domino mortises in the base and sides. And with all that done, I can get the carcass dry fitted. Note that this bench dips a bit in the centre, so I've popped in a couple of small wedges just for support. You know, one of the questions that comes up fairly regularly, especially if I've shown some of my saw collection in a video or in a, in a picture on Instagram, is that, oh, why, why, do you have, why do you have so many saws there? Why have you got two festals? Um, and the reason that the, my stock answer is, well, it's good to have a spare. 
Uh, my whole workshop is based very much around track saws, plunge saws, so if suddenly one died and one did, uh, you're kind of stuck with that one. Uh, also, back when I was doing a lot more installs, a lot more involved installs, it was good to be able to leave one on site and have one here if I needed to just cut something quickly. Uh, and the other reason is for times like this, uh, where I've cut a bevel cut on all of the shelves and now I'm just cutting everything to, to length. But if I screw one of those up, I don't, you know, I don't want to have to try and recreate that bevel angle. I can actually leave that saw set up with that bevel on it and just use the other one for doing the cross cuts, the straight 90 cuts. So it's just a little bit of extra flexibility. Yes, I worked for many, many years with just the one saw and then it occurred to me that, you know what, I really should have a spare. And if you can afford one, I'd highly recommend having a spare, if only so that you can either keep one in the van not recommended overnight, obviously, or, or keep on with you on an install and safe in the knowledge that you've got a spare, you've got another one back at base because dragging stuff back and forth gets old pretty fast, especially if you forget the plug it cord or something else like that. So yeah, it's good, good to have, you know, not two of everything, but two of the main bits of gear. Yes, I do only have one Domino and one Lamello, but there we are, you know. That's how it goes sometimes. Anyway, that's why I've got two saws. I do have a third, but you know, a third festival and a few others, but we won't get into that just now. Anyway, uh, I'm going to do the straight cut on this, and then I can. Uh, I've got the uh, carcass mocked up, and then I'll be able to trim those shells back to where I need them to be. And hopefully, fingers crossed, I won't mess anything up. But if I do, I know I've got the bevel set up still on the original saw, and I can recreate that very easily. Anyway, let's get these, uh, this last bit of cutting done, uh, and then it's just a question of doing the dominoes and the shelf and holes on uh, this carcass and all the others too. Mm. Getting the exact fit takes a little bit of trial and error. The Talmeter tape measure really helps here for internal measurements, but once done, the shelves can easily be trimmed to size. Okay, that'll do. Uh, that's those four shelves. Quick slide through. There's four shelves cut, angled to fit, and the top one done as well. And they're all fitting pretty nicely. So, time to uh, time to go and grab something to eat. That's taken most of the morning just doing that one. I've still got to do shelf pin holes in this one for the lower shelves. Uh, and then I can get onto the other carcasses, get the dominoes and the shelf pinholes done on those. But they're fairly straightforward, so I uh, should be able to rattle through those this afternoon. Uh, but these are the fiddly ones with the angled angle cuts, always tricky. So yes, uh, something to eat, and then back in a bit. All right. <laughs> 